Hi, I'm your host, Erica Polsonelli, and welcome to Evolve by Erica, the podcast, where we talk all things spirituality, ascension, health, wellness, and beyond. I'm so excited that you are here. Come on in. Hi, guys. I am so excited to have Elizabeth Andres from Spots in the City on the podcast today. Elizabeth is such an inspiration. She is someone in the creator space that I've been drawn to for a very long time because of how much effort and awareness she puts into the content that she creates. Her grace and her beautifully aligned energy She's incredible. And when I got to meet her in person for the first time, we instantly clicked and I just felt so connected. Her her energy is so pure and light and I feel just so safe with her and that's important to me in connections and in friendship. So I'm so excited to have Elizabeth on the podcast today. She's going to share all about the many things that she works on, that she is putting out into this world. And I left feeling so inspired by all that she does. So I hope you enjoy this conversation. We talk about all things, business, wellness, energy, all the things, and I know that you'll enjoy it too. I'm so excited and grateful that you're here today and carved time out to be here and to connect with Evolve community and one-on-one with me. I feel so grateful. Thank Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm truly so honored and I've been manifesting being on more podcasts. So thank you for being a part of that. I love that. I, when I first met you, I followed you for a really long time. I started following Sweats in probably 2017. Wow. Early days. When did you guys start? I think it was 2016 officially. Okay. So I was right there in the beginning. Yeah, you were. And I just loved watching you from afar. But when I met you in person, like you really are this angelic soul. Thank you. You are so gentle, kind, sweet, and open. And from the outside, you're like perfectly put together all the time. You have this like beautiful aesthetic. <laughs> Thank you. And then as you meet, I mean, as I met you in person, it's like, oh my gosh, it's all so authentic and real. And I felt so connected to you. I really appreciate that. And it means a lot coming from you as well, because I view you as such an energetically attuned person and someone who's been so expansive to me. So I really appreciate that. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. No, I really mean it. And everyone that I've told who... um who know you and follow you and I'm like, she's even, she's as amazing or even better in person. Like your energy is just so crystal clear and beautiful. Truly. Wow. I, that's like the biggest compliment you could give. So I really, really appreciate it. Of course. So I would love to hear a little bit of how your whole journey got started. So how did sweat start? What was going on before sweats? What brought you there? And for those who are listening who may not know, um, Elizabeth is Mm co-founder of sweats in the city. And also now the Aura, Aura, Oro app, which we'll get to and podcast. There's so much to cover, so much to talk about. So I would love to hear. A hundred percent. So I moved to New York City in 2015. I had graduated from University of Michigan. I didn't have a job after school. I was working in Chicago for a little bit, living with my sister. And I always felt this strong pull to be in New York City. I was like, I come from a pretty small town in the Midwest. And I just always felt like there was something else out there. Like I I was always seeking that even growing up. I was like, there's something that's not here. And I'm feeling really like limited in this small town. So I got a job at Bloomberg. I moved to New York city. That was like my ticket. Um, and I started working there. I met Dale, who is my co-founder very synchronistically. Um, we were set up as blind roommates and during a guy that I went to college with who was a friend. Yeah. So I like posted on Facebook literally. And It's funny because now we have a Facebook group where we connect roommates and it's got like 60,000 members and it's just so nice to like have that full circle moment. Um, But I was working at Bloomberg. Dale was working in fashion at the time and we both bonded immediately over this shared love of group fitness. It was kind of new at the time, like bar was just starting to happen. Class Pass was just starting. The unlimited days we always refer to. Um, and we were like going into these classes pretty blind and we didn't have a ton of money. So we were like, we don't want to waste our money on, you know, at the time, I think it was like $35 for a soul cycle class. 
So we really wanted to go in informed and knowing what to expect. So we started creating these lists of the best classes in New York. We started sharing them with coworkers, with family and friends, and people were really into it. And so we were like, okay, let's start an Instagram account. So we started it and it was really just like bare bones. Like we weren't featured in any of it. It was like photos of the actual studio. You know, can you shower there? Can you do your hair after? Like, can I go to work from that studio? That kind of information. And from there, it really just grew and it came to the point where, you know, we were both working our full time jobs and like we were starting to make money with sweats and we were like, okay, can we make this leap? And so we planned really meticulously, you know, my Virgo side, it was very like financial down to the penny, like, can we make this work? And I've never had any support from my parents, like financially, tons of support from them, but not financially. And so I was like really nervous to make that leap and, you know, to be able to believe that I could actually support myself in New York City. Like I, you had told me that five years prior, especially when I was in college, like no way I would have thought that. So it was pretty cool to be able to quit our jobs, support sweats full time and kind of grow it from there. You know, we've, we've expanded into different avenues. Um, we have a recommendation app called The Herd, which is really like encompasses all of our different like health, beauty, fitness, wellness recommendations we've gathered over the years. We have Oro, which is a low impact fitness app. So it's been cool to take what is sort of our bread and butter and what started as studio reviews and sort of expand it into other avenues and ways that other people can reach us that aren't just in New York. So incredible. Thank and you. it's also foundational, like all from the beginning. The yeah. Herd app. Because I would see you all the time post recommendations. People really come to you. Actually, I work with someone who loves your acupunctures. They found that Jackie through you. She's so good. And it's amazing. Like I, I definitely will look at your reviews or recommendations and I don't take it lightly. It's I like, appreciate okay, that. I know that this has been tried and true. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, literally self care is like one of my core pillars of just what I love to live by. And so the fact that I've been able to turn that into a job essentially where I like go around and review these different amazing healers and practices and, and all of that is like truly a dream. It's amazing. What guided you, like where did you feel that spark or when did you feel the spark of creating the herd app? So it's interesting because, you know, we've always done recommendations and Dale and I during COVID started Oro as sort of like, you know, a, a way to evolve with the times. Yeah. And that, of course, houses our fitness component of our recommendations, but there was always this sort of gap of like, what about the facials and the acupuncture and like the massage and all those things that we both love? And we were talking about it for a while. We, we didn't really know. At the time, we had a spreadsheet and it was just a shared Google spreadsheet that we would send out to people and like, obviously, we weren't making any money off of it. And I remember that. Yeah, we were like, here, have the spreadsheet. This is perfect. And people seem to love bare bones type stuff. Yeah. Like even when we started Oro, it was on Zoom and people like loved that. Um, so we were actually then approached again, back to the manifestation piece. Like I really believe that the right people come to you. And as a projector, like the invitation component is so big. And we were approached by someone who had founded this app, The Herd. She had created it. Her name is Christine. She's one of our co-founders. And she was looking to bring on more like-minded people. And she was like, you guys, this is exactly what you do. Like, do you have an interest in this? And we were like, 100%. So we came on with her. We did a total like kind of revamp of the website and the app and like the style of it and brought in all of our recommendations and sort of rebranded it um, to be something that we were able to share. So it was really cool to kind of have, you know, I really believe that you can't control, obviously, the outcome of what you're manifesting. And so often we get so caught up in, um, you know, the how it's going to get there. And I would have never foreseen that someone would approach us with an app that was already made. I mean, it was like so beautiful. And so, yeah, we've been just working on building it out, getting businesses involved. And it's been really cool to do. It's amazing. And you cover all the major cities. We are in Austin, Miami, Toronto, L.A. and New York. Amazing. Hopefully I'm not missing one. <laughs> but and yeah. most of the places are places that you and Dale love. Exactly. And Chicago as well. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. Going back to Oro, I was so grateful to be part of the community and to share meditations there and also do a lot of the workouts on there. It came at the perfect time when so many people <laughs> really needed 100%. it. 100%. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that and the beginning of it, how it started. Some instructors maybe you want to give like a shout out to. Yes. So we absolutely loved having you on there. And um, I appreciate that you allowed us to expand a little bit more into meditation because that's something I 
personally have always been really passionate about bringing to Oro and making it more than just workouts, you know, kind of making it this all encompassing self-care destination so that you don't have to like have a bunch of different apps. So Oro really came about during the pandemic. Um, you know, we were reviewing classes up until the beginning of 2020. And when that happened and the world shut down, especially in New York City, we were like, well, shoot, now we can't review. So we had to pivot. So we started putting together these live workout lists. Again, back to the spreadsheet. Everything is very like raw and bare when we initially create it. And we were just listing, you know, all these different workout instructors were doing like free classes and stuff on Instagram. And we were literally just creating a schedule of free classes that people were sharing. That other people were offering. Yeah. And that's always been our thing. A lot of people always ask, are you guys ever going to be interested in becoming instructors yourself? And like, no, that's actually not for us. We're really just like reviewers. Like we know all the elements of the perfect workout. And so eventually, you know, after creating these lists and after creating a platform that was Zoom based and sort of like started as sweat with sweats, it was like super basic. Um, we were like, I actually think that there's something here. And we were on one platform initially. We eventually um, created our own app through Vimeo. And it just kind of evolved from there. But it's it's always been about you know, curating these different workouts and instructors and methods that Dale and I both love. And, and we're so passionate about delivering really good workouts to people because I've been a part of so many different platforms where the, there's a ton of variety, but I don't necessarily love all of it. Mm -hmm. And so our whole thing is like here, you have a curated schedule for the week, some arms, some butt, some legs, some cardio. And, you know, we put it together for you to kind of take the decision making out of your workout week. Yeah, I love that. How did you decide on the name? So Oro is like a root word in a lot of languages for gold. And we started it with the idea that we were the gold standard for boutique virtual fitness. So it's like Oro in Spanish and I think a few different derivatives in Italian and other languages. You actually might know. I don't know what it is no, in Italian. No, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I love that so much. There's something about workouts at home. I think it's the projector element in me as well. Yes. It's so efficient and I love being efficient. Same. My husband doesn't understand. He's like, I, I don't get it. If you didn't have to leave the house, you probably wouldn't. You do your meditations at home. You do your workouts at home. Like it's just so efficient. And then I could focus my energy on other things that totally. I need to put my energy to because as projectors, we don't have a massive amount to go around. Right. I was driving to Soul Cycle 40, it was probably a 36 minute drive, I think, according to Waze. <laughs> and I was doing it maybe like two times a week. And then it was down to one time a week. And then right before the pandemic hit, I already started to transition to more things at home, just intuitively. I felt like that's what I needed a lot more mm. yoga, a little bit more grounding. I started to really understand what we were talking about before. We even hopped on air, just like understanding your body more and what you've always thought you should be doing or what has always worked for your body. It was like finally this call for something different. And I think a lot of that came through my meditation practice. Like what do I really need? That's Is really interesting. Five minutes of intense cycling and like with really loud music. Right. Or is yeah. it like 25 minutes on a Pilates mat in my own home? It's so interesting that you were like called to that early. And I think I certainly wasn't in a place that I, where I was like meditating at the time. I, I honestly was not in a great headspace heading into COVID. So you can only imagine what the isolation kind of did to me. But I was struggling with at-home workouts a lot. And that was kind of like part of the reason During why COVID? we created it. Yes. I was like felt really sluggish. I was terrified of the virus at the time. Like I, I have a lot of like health stuff, which I'm sure we'll get into. And I was just so afraid of getting it. I didn't see anyone for multiple months. Not, not anyone. So I was like really isolated. And Dale wasn't with you at this time. She was living in the city, but, um, she was actually like a few blocks away from me. And I was that afraid where we weren't seeing each other. Yeah. She would come down to my window and I would like wave out of my window, <laughs> which seems so ridiculous now, of course. But um, yeah, so I, back to the mat workouts, I think, especially as a projector, like being able to do that at home and just be like, literally take a one hour block and have both my meditation and my workout done yeah. and sh be showered is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. And then I think back to like all the time I was spending getting to a workout and getting home. Right. You know, half the day, all of a sudden it's lunchtime. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think the pendulum is coming back into balance now where I, I will never let go of my at-home workouts. Same. Because again, it's like way too efficient. Yeah. And you you just know what you like, what you're going to get. You just go right on and do it. But I think there is also such beauty in having group workouts as well and in person now. And I'm fi- I finally, I don't know if you can relate to this, but over the past two months, I feel like I'm finally coming out of quarantine. Totally. I think, were we just talking about this in the DM or did Maybe. I imagine that? I No, I think we did. Right? Yes. We, you shared something about this and I yes. told you, I'm like, this has been coming oh, up for me. I was talking about how I, I'm back to like loving getting myself ready for the yes. day. Yes. Because it helps you to feel. It took me four years to get here. Po- has it been almost four almost years since four COVID? Almost four years. Yes. There's something really empowering about getting yourself ready for the day. And I I completely lost that during COVID. And it even bled into like literally until this summer, I think, is when the change started to to happen for me. It's I really want to know. I actually have Alice Bell coming on later, an astrologer. And I just want to know if there's something astrologically happening that I do I do know that Pluto is moving into Aquarius. It's a huge transit that's taking place in January. Mm. And it's like a lot of change. But I really feel like the chapter of the pandemic has ended and we're feeling this like, I don't know, reawakening. It's and, energizing yes. and we have to know what's going on in the stars because there's something. And wanting to be in community, wanting to get ready and wanting to get out of sweats. Like all I did was wear sweats. Same. And like I'm, and I love it. But Me too. <laughs> like I, I'm someone who both loves <clears throat> comfort but also loves aesthetics. Yeah. So like – I obviously lean into comfort as much as possible, but like I don't feel fully expressed without putting myself together, a little makeup, an outfit where I feel really good in it. Like that matters to me. And it's not about how other people view me at all. I actually could see no one today and just be happy that I have like a leather pant on, you know? (laughs) The Virgo, I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. So going back to you and Zale, how – I'm sure with a partnership, there are so many strengths you work off one another for. And I would love for you to share your strengths and her strengths and like where you feel supported by her, where she feels supported by you. Because sometimes I feel like I'm very much on a solo mission. It's like, oh, it must be so nice <laughs> to have someone that's like really in it from the start with you. It's really been great. And There's been so many things that we've gone through together as a unit and like I'll just call out COVID because we've been talking about it as one of them to have someone to be able to go to and like we're both experiencing the exact same thing in social media together at the same time and and oftentimes like I'll be triggered and Dale won't be or Dale will be triggered and I won't be so we we almost always have that balance. It's very rare when you find both of us triggered at the same time or like heated at the same time like usually one of us is talking the other off a ledge and I recognize that we're extremely lucky to have that dynamic and and we're both very similar people in our interests and like we're both Leos we have a similar personality but we also have totally different skill sets um so for example like I'm a very numbers oriented person I'm really like meticulous and organized and structured and I like spreadsheets and I like to know exactly where we're at as a business and and all that. And Dale brings a extremely creative mindset where like she's the brains behind so many of our reels and so much viral content and bringing like a personality that I don't necessarily have on camera. Um, So it's been really interesting. And like, obviously your skill sets grow with time in a business, but they're also something you bring to the table right in the beginning. And, and so something that like, I think in a partnership in business, you have to kind of hone in on and and determine what your roles are and be able to each lean into your strengths so you're not forcing like I'm not telling Dale to do our monthly invoicing or something like that where like that doesn't click for her Mm -hmm. um you know and she's not telling me to do a creative brainstorm or whatever it is it's it's really figuring out your strengths and then delegating yeah I love that I remember I used to be a teacher I don't know if you know I didn't know that elementary school teacher And I was in a co-teaching classroom because I was a special ed teacher and there would be a general ed teacher in the classroom. And it's really true. There must be a law of the universe when you're in partnership. Like when you're having the worst day ever, the other is there to boost you up and pick you up and then vice versa. And it's like, wait, I was just saying what she's saying. And now here I am feeling how she was now feeling. And it's like, how is she there supporting me now? It's like incredible it really how that is. works in partnership. Because I also have friends that like I love them <clears throat> dearly, but I just know that this would not – 
a, a business partnership wouldn't work, you know, because I think when you're with someone who kind of gets fired up with you simultaneously and can be a bit of a chameleon, like that's not what you want in business. Yeah. You need someone who's like on their own path and can see clearly even when maybe you're a little bit blurry. Yeah. And can bring that balance. Yeah. yeah. Dale is an extremely balanced person. So I'm, I'm really lucky to have her. I love it. I don't think I've ever met her in person. I would love you to. You haven't? Oh, you have to. Yeah, I would love to. You guys are such a great duo. Thank you. I love it. I love everything that you create. So I know you're saying that she sometimes brings a personality to Instagram that sometimes you may not. And I feel like in the beginning or no, I think just observing like a lot of the time it is so much aesthetic, which I love, but you come on camera and you're talking to and you're sharing like really deep and personal things. Is that something new? I think it's something I've always, well, not always done. In the beginning, I wasn't doing it at all. I think the more that I started to like open up and share little bits and pieces of my life mm -hmm. and the more receptive I felt people were or encouraging of it, like that really helped me to open up. But there's also a balance. And I'm to be totally honest, I haven't fully struck that perfect balance of, you know, sharing enough with people where I don't feel closed off, but also like having boundaries in place and and sort of like my privacy respected because it is something that we put ourselves out there for being on social media. I'm, I'll be the first to own that. But it's also something where like you want to protect certain aspects of you. And also like there's a lot of criticism out there mm -hmm. and just protecting yourself from that in certain areas of your life where you might not be able to take the criticism is important. It's so true. I listen to Jordan Younger a lot, The Balance Bar. Mm -hmm. I love her. I love her too. She's another like pure light being. Yes. And she talks a lot about how she could have like a hundred great reviews and then that one negative one just can completely take us over. And I had this moment last night where I exp I just heard someone's comments on, honestly, on the podcast and I have gratefully never really received negativity and I think when you grow, there's this law and it exists whether you're growing or not, but like whatever exists for you in the positive light, people can also see in the negative light. It's the duality. Yeah. So as many people love you and think you are, oh my gosh, so inspirational and incredible, the exact opposite is going to exist as well. And that's like really hard for us to swallow and yes. digest as humans. Especially as a sensitive person. Like yeah. I... Yeah, it's hard, but you're so right. And I love that framing of it because as you grow and more people like you, there will be an equal, there will be equal parts that dislike you for whatever reason. Yeah. And you can't be defending yourself to everyone. No. And it's really hard to digest. And I found myself in a moment last night because like I said, I really haven't, I don't even look at my reviews. My Virgo husband was like, what, <laughs> how's the podcast doing? Let's check out like some of the feedback. I'm like, yeah. okay. And he's like, oh, the, he read me one. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. He's like, Erica, that was a year ago. You never read it. And I'm like, oh my, I didn't realize like I'm not more of like the detail oriented technical. Like I'm just putting it out, mm -hmm. putting Which it out. Which is a really love. beautiful thing. There is beauty in that, but there has to be balance for sure. And then I just read one that wasn't so positive. And I felt something I haven't felt in a while. And I challenged myself to be like, as much as I can accept the positivity, I have to be that willing to accept the negativity. Right. And it's really fucking humbling. That's a fucking it's challenge. It's really humbling. <laughs> and it's like, this person is entitled to their opinion. And it got me to think about just social media in general and like the comment section on some pages. It's, it's a very interesting place if you ever dare to go into the comments. Yeah. But it's like, everything that shows up as someone's truth, the exact opposite can exist. So if someone's speaking negatively, the exact opposite can exist. And it's empowering at times, but also it's like, oof, it's a lot. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because I, I feel the same. I'm sensitive. I don't like to hear negative things. I mean, I don't think anybody really does. Oh, of course. But I've had a few um, like whitelisted ads that companies have sponsored. So essentially like for anyone who doesn't know, as an influencer, you'll create a video and then a brand will pay you to put for them to put money behind it to run it as an ad, like a monthly fee or whatever. And because of that, I've, I've done it with a few companies recently or like this summer. And because they're putting spend behind it, it's seeing a lot more eyes and it's not seeing your audience, not seeing your loyal, you know, Instagram community. <laughs> The things that people have written about me, like it almost at first I was shook by, it. I was like commenting back and then I'm like, wait a second, these are a bunch of people 
I don't know where they are. They don't know me. They're not in my community. And like, just let them be like, you don't have to fight every battle. And it was almost like to receive that much like random hatred um, for my genes, for the fact that I was talking about anti-aging, but I'm only 31. I'm like, you know, it was like at first I was like defending myself and then I'm like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. you can't control everyone's opinion. And like, there's a Byron Katie quote that's like, it's not your job to like me. It's mine. And I find a lot of peace in that where you're like, all I can do is like myself and feel really good about myself so that I'm not triggered when people say things about me. Cause at the end of the day, if someone said to you, like, Erica's hair is too red, mm-hmm. you wouldn't be triggered by that. Cause your hair is not red. Mm-hmm. So like, as much as I can love myself and nurture myself and take good care of myself and put good out into the world, the less that I am triggered and upset when people are saying something negative. Yeah. Did you see a big shift in this like as the platform really took off? Um, yes, definitely. I think – but and back to your point about like as you grow, there will be an equal yes, amount of people exactly. that, that grow against you. Right. And yeah, I mean it's definitely something we saw. I think it's something that – Luckily, we haven't been massive targets of. Yeah. That said, during COVID, I think everyone was just upset and angry and scared. And so yeah. it came out in a nasty way. And I think it's still sort of happening. Like there's all these forums where people are talking about influencers and stuff. Like I steer very, very clear of mm-hmm. that. I'm just not interested in that kind of energy. But it's certainly out there. And I think back to that sort of like COVID bleeding into everyday life, like that that was a piece of it, unfortunately. It really was. And I think, like, again, you're such a light. And by continuing to just share it and the less energy that we give it, the better. Totally. And it's just just something top of mind because, again, last night I had this one experience. But um, it kind of comes with the territory and putting yourself out there. It does. And I think we have to just be aware of that, put up our glass wall barriers wherever we need to, and just proceed forward and do it with love. I mean, that sounds kind of cheesy, but, like, That's at the end of the day what we're doing. And the thought came to me today how we're constantly changing as individuals that are on a path of evolving and growing and spiritually growing. So the things that we've said or that have been true to us, I don't know, a year ago are not anymore. And I think everything in life has to be taken with just such an open mind and more increased compassion and more increased love because we're all just doing the best we can at this vibrational standpoint where we're at. Totally. We're allowed to change. Our views are allowed to change just because it's documented because of social media doesn't mean that it can't change. I had someone, I like recently switched probiotics and I'm also like always a big sharer of my supplements and the things I'm taking. And I had someone kind of come at me for switching probiotics because she was on my prior probiotic. And I was like, listen, my body has changed. My needs have changed. I've got stuff going on in this body that needs a different probiotic. And I still support the other one and love it. And, you know, I would never share something that I wouldn't personally take or I I share only the things I'm obsessed with. Um, But it kind of got me thinking like, wow, we are not locked into the views, the products, the the things that are orbiting us at certain times. Like that's going to change just like it does for everybody else. It's just not documented for them. It's so true. And I feel like in a day, like all of a sudden, the next day you can feel different about something and totally. your intuition can drop in and you're like, I need something different Yes, and make a pivot. And it's the beautiful thing of having influence and sharing all that you have and that this person really like looks up to you mm-hmm. to feel right. guided. There's beauty in that. You know, there is. And then it's also at the end of the day, we all need to tap into our intuition and really listen to that and be guided by it. 100%. Yeah. You've been so open with your health journey, your mental health journey, and um, that's an area like I've really seen you open up about, and I'm sure it wasn't easy to share so much about. Uh, Do you want to just fill us in a little bit on like your physical health journey? Because I feel like with all that you've been through, you've gained so much wisdom and a lot of your own research and guidance, and I would love to hear like an update of how you're doing and how you're feeling now. Yeah, so I've had kind of a weird health history and... I'm now at a place where I view it as such a gift, like truly, even though I'm still like not quite all the way there um, in terms of feeling 100%, but it's given me a different level of empathy than I think a lot of people have and also a different skill set when it comes to navigating and being your own health advocate. Um, So just like for a little sampler of kind of what I've what I've had going on, I I actually have a pacemaker. I got it at the age of 20. 
for a heart condition that just randomly popped up. Um, so from there, you know, that was really weird and jolting and traumatic as a 20 year old in college. And from there, I started kind of developing all of these different chronic conditions. So it was like strep throat all the time. Like I was on antibiotics for literally years. Um, and then it was diverticulitis when I was like 25, which like a young, healthy woman should not be getting. Um, and then I started during COVID and there's always generally an emotional trigger behind each of these things, which I know you know about. And, and during COVID, I started getting these like chronic UTIs and bladder pain. Essentially, it felt like I had a low grade UTI for three years. Like picture that feeling. I think a lot of people have, have trouble with the idea of chronic pelvic pain, but when you put the UTI into a woman's mind, like everyone winces. Um, and so, you know, luckily I had sort of developed this skill set of like, okay, I'm going to become a doctor in this area, you know, but I spent a lot of time in Reddit. I spent a lot of time in Facebook groups, support groups, like just gathering information because it really was not out there. Mm -hmm. Like you Google UTIs and it's like wear cotton underwear or like drink a lot of water. And it's like, no, 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 we have something else going on here. And, you know, I, it was kind of a mix of me being like scrappy and like not giving up on this but also like letting my intuition guide me to the right practitioners because that's really where I've landed is in a place where, you know, I'm, I now have the right team. I now know what's going on. And I think that's a huge part of anyone's chronic health battle is like getting the answer of like what's actually off because oftentimes what's at the surface isn't actually like the root cause of what's going on. And then also assembling like the right people that can take care of you, can give you the right medication where you need it or herbs or, you know, somatic healing, whatever it is, like there's always a recipe and it's just a matter of like kind of getting those things to click into place. Yeah. Wow. And it's, it's, it could be so stressful having to try and get like an unofficial degree in totally. biology or it's, whatever. It's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Figure out your symptoms. Yeah. And how do you feel now? You're feeling like you're, I'm like at 90%, amazing. which I, to me is like just as good as a hundred to be honest, because I, you know, back to the Virgo thing, like I track my symptoms every day because I had to, like, I think from the outside looking in, especially people who haven't been through any kind of chronic health thing or don't have like a super sensitive system like I do, you know, they look at it as you're always trying to fix something. There will always be something wrong if this is your approach. And it's like, no, I'm in genuine pain and I am just literally willing to try anything. So you know, sometimes I feel like even my family doesn't get it. Like, oh, what's your diet this year that you're on? I'm like, this isn't for fun. This isn't to lose weight. This is literally because I have no other choice but to take it into my own hands to try to heal this body. Like, I only have one. And if eating gluten-free or avoiding, you know, eggs is going to do it for me, like, I will do whatever it takes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty much at a point of 90%. I'm probably, like, have seven-ish bad days a month. And to me, that's like a huge gift because it used to be the other way around where I had seven-ish good days. Wow. What are some things you're doing right now that you feel are really supporting you? I am taking these awesome herbs for Lyme disease. I take them every day, six of each one a day, and it's been amazing. I also came... So you were diagnosed with Lyme disease? Yeah. That was also something that I came across in this mixture of like, why is my body not healing from these UTIs? Yeah. So I found out that there was a lot of mold, which I'm still working on. I found out that there was Lyme and a bunch of co-infections. Like, but no one tells you that. Like, no one tells you that if you're not responding to antibiotics, like maybe there's something else going on here that your immune system isn't properly responding to what it's being given. I want to talk more about mold. Yes. This is coming up for me a lot. Like I'm getting pings about it. And I don't know. I know that when I lived in my apartment, we're by the beach. So there's so mm. much moisture in the air. When we moved out of our apartment, I was always itchy in that apartment. My skin was very itchy. That's I, all I remember. I get itchy. Very itchy. And when we moved out, I had shoes in the back of my closet that were covered in mold. No. I threw out so much stuff. And my house is pretty new, but again, I live by the beach, so it's always a concern to me. And it's just something I actually um, – there's a health food store in my town – and the owner of it, she moved upstate and is doing her whole like farm off the grid. A little jealous of her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but before she did, she was like, I'm talking to you and I, I'm i just getting the hit like mold. And I'm like, really? She said that to yes. you? Yes. <gasps> and she went to like more specific, 
specific details as well. And I'm like, okay, that's very interesting. So I've just been, it's been in the back of my mind and I've been wanting to go about like digging into that further. Have you tested for that? How do they test you if you feel yes. comfortable sharing all these details? I would love to share it. It's very prevalent right now. I can't say that I've fixed it, but I do have the information to figure out like what's going on. So there is a mycotoxin urine test. I'll have to get the name of it okay. for you. Um, and I took that recently and it tests for like all the different kinds of mold and it gives you back your levels and it also shows you like what's like in the green range versus the red. All of them were in the red for me. Wow. And I also took that test a year prior in my old apartment and they were in like the yellow. So now I have the information that moving into where I have been since last February is uh, it's got to be increasing my levels. Oh my mold can come from food. Yeah. But if it's going that high, there's a water source somewhere. So that's the first step is like getting that information and knowing like what's going on in your system. And the reason that I got into it obviously is because of my bladder pain. And you know, if, if it's coming out of your urine, like it's sitting in your bladder and that's going to cause irritation. So anyone with chronic bladder stuff should definitely get that checked. Um, and then it's a matter of getting your place checked by someone who's really good, because I think that there's a lot of people out there who aren't and getting an ERMI test. So ERMI? Yeah. E-R-M-I. Okay. That's like the type of test. Uh -huh. And it essentially gives you a score like one to 25. And it's helpful because you then have, I've had mold tests where they just give you like, here are your cubic centimeters of mold. And like, no, you don't have anything to compare it mm -hmm. to. If you have that ERMI number, you know, like anything above like, call it in New York City, like a seven is bad. Okay. I had a friend who was living in a 25. Oh my She gosh. had like severe shortness of breath, like all of these things. And it's unfortunately really prevalent. Like I think it was in my last apartment too. But there's also like detox genes that are at play here. Like if you have um, a mutation in your detox pathway genes, like it can affect the way that you're getting rid of these molds. Yeah. So one person might be more affected than the other. And from what I understand, you can't like – take a pill or a supplement that gets rid of mold. Okay. It's really about taking the right binders and things that can like bind to those toxins and flushing them out. Mm. Bowel movements every day, lymphatic drainage. Like I'm, I actually have an appointment with my doctor tomorrow to dive into my um, labs a little further. So I'll report back to you personally, but um, I think it's really about getting out of the moldy environment and or remediating it and then really detoxing your system. Yeah. I just have been guided to dry brush. I was never, I know this was a thing for a very long time. I was never able to dry brush. It would leave me so itchy. Okay, same. Like, I would get really, rashes, like really, full histamine. It was horrible. And now I do it every day. You do? Mm -hmm. So I, I got the hit recently. Like you need to start dry brushing. And I did it. I was like, I'm just going to move more intuitively and more gently. Like I'm not going after anything. I'm just like right. moving the energy. And I'm doing it so much more gently. I'm not getting itchy at all. And Huge. I've also been a little guided to activated charcoal and like sweating saunas. And that's um, a part of it. I know, which is like, am I intuitively treating myself or something? I don't know. Literally, I have to find yes. out. I have to find out. Do you have a muscle test or like yeah, have see someone who – I'd be curious to see where mold would come up. And my friend you. Marcy does that where she like asks you a question yeah. and then, yeah, I love that. Same. Where do you go for that? Do you mind sharing? Um, Dr. Beth Forgosh in Soho is an amazing one. Um, I've been seeing her for years for like skin stuff, all of it. And she will muscle test your body. She'll, sometimes she'll have you hold a supplement and see how your body responds oh, to it. Cool. I'm fascinated by that. It's amazing. Is she on your Yeah, of course. Too? She's okay. on the herd. <laughs> I need to go on yes. and do like a deep dive and make all these <laughs> Please do. It's the best. Do. So tell me a little bit about being a projector as a founder. I don't know if you consider yourself like a CEO of your company, but – um, I know we spoke a little bit off camera about being a projector and how we acted as generators in this world because it's so easy to, to feel like you need to produce, you need to go after things, you need to hustle and you need to work until you get what you want. Totally. And the projector life is the invitation, just like you said earlier, and sitting back and being able to attract in. So I would love, personally, I would love to hear more <laughs> about it. Yeah. So I, I discovered human design, I think it was like 2019. So I've always been really interested in it and called to it. And obviously, as we were talking about, being a projector felt so validating for me, but also like, oh, whoa, I've been doing some things wrong. I've been kind of going against my natural grade and 
for anyone listening who doesn't know, projectors need a lot more rest. They're supposed to work, what is it, like three hours a day, which I know is going to sound absurd to some people. people. It it still sounds a little absurd to me, but like also sounds so right. I know. (laughs) You know? Um, So I think for me, it's listening to my body a lot more and not doing the hustle thing. Mm -hmm. There's still a part of my brain that wants to do that. And I have to kind of remind it, like, you're not still at Bloomberg doing sweats at, at five in the morning at a coffee shop and then going into work. Like you have created a lifestyle and a, and a workspace for yourself where you can sleep in until eight if you want to and like do the nine o'clock Pilates class and still get enough done in your day. Yeah. So part of it is kind of giving you that hall pass of like, okay, I can just breathe into this. And part of it is also understanding like the way that your body operates differently than other people and, and being able to support it in different ways. Yeah. We're supposed to be very efficient, which yes. helps us to work for a less amount of time and get a lot in. But it's so funny when you brought up like the three hour. I remember talking to my mom a few weeks ago. I was like, I'm taking a self-care day. She's like, Erica, every day is a self-care day. Like to her, <laughs> yes. it does look like every day is a yes. self-care day because I'm getting my morning meditation and I'm getting my workout and hopefully I'm going for a walk. But Fitting work in as well. And right. then, yeah. And fitting it in where it feels right. Like it doesn't always have to be eight in the morning or, mm-hmm. you know, at midnight. Like it could be midday. Sometimes people, I get criticism on like too much self care on social media, which is so interesting because that's like, like, I'm a projector. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, first of all, I'm, I'm a projector. Second of all, like I've created this platform to be able to get paid to self share yeah. self care, which is amazing. But also, like, it's how I operate well. And I have to be showing up in a good place because when I'm not, like, I am not creating content. I am not, nothing's flowing, know. you know? And I feel as a projector, everything is that flow. If I'm not in that flow state, everything feels off. And I need to be in that in that flow and in that creative space. Yeah. And doing things when I'm called to, not because it's on my to-do list. Do you exactly. feel that way too? Yes. And I'm trying to really get better with that because – for so long, even like meditation was on my to-do list. Mm-hmm. And it was less of like, a, I'm doing this because I feel so good that I want to keep this up. Yeah. And it was more of a, okay, I got to like force it and sit there through it and check the box. Yeah. So I think you can't really force that. It kind of needs to come with time and practice and momentum. Um, but it's definitely a part of the process. Yeah, it is. And I, I also feel like with a team, sometimes it can be hard. Gianna's here with us. She's amazing. She helps me so much, but we'll have a plan. And I'm like, I'm sorry, we're not doing this today. I'm not inspired to do that. I'm right. really feeling this. And a lot of the times I'll get hard on myself and be like, Erica, you need to be focused. You need to complete one thing and carry that out. But it's also like, do I or am I supposed to just follow my inspiration and where I'm guided? Right. And I think I need to be better about that because <laughs> it's not always that easy to – like, I don't know. It's like our brains are pulling us one way and then the other and it mm-hmm. gets confusing. But I think you have a really good point. And I think just tapping in just to feel like what does and doesn't feel right throughout the day. Yeah. It could be as simple as that. And listen, we all have stuff we have to get done. This isn't like – you know, we're not promoting like a full life of leisure, but like working on things and and at the time that they feel really right to you yeah. is important. So true. You shared, I think it was yesterday or the day before about alcohol and how you consume it, the way in which you consume it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I loved it because I think a lot of people want to put us like or put everything and everyone in a box. Yes. Like people will DM me all the time and be like, I know you're sober. I'm like, actually, no, I'm not sober. I just rarely drink, but I do drink sometimes. So right. if you see me with a wine, like don't think, you know, right. don't. She's not cheating on her yeah, system. Or like falling apart or breaking something. Yeah. And I loved how you shared. It's not really about like what you're drinking. It's how you're drinking and the place you come from. And it also really stood out to me that you mentioned like you're never really getting drunk and like out of your body anymore. Right. I recently, I rarely drink, hence why people feel like I'm sober, my husband's sober, and I think they just think maybe we both are together. Mm -hmm. But when I was away recently, I actually had a glass of rosé. And it was like a large glass. Like it was just like a really big glass. <laughs> and I was sipping and it wasn't because I over poured it. It was just how it was served and I was enjoying it. And all of a sudden, for the first time in years, 
I felt altered. Oh. And I'm very used to feeling altered in a very different way. Like right. I'm altered quite often through my practice, By honestly. Choice. Honestly, yeah. yeah. And it's like this very elevated experience and sometimes I feel like I'm connecting with different dimensions or energies that aren't in this 3D realm. Mm -hmm. And then after getting altered in this way with alcohol, I panicked. And I was like, I drank too much rosé and everyone, all the girls were like, oh my gosh, are you sick? What's wrong? I'm like, no, no, no. It sounds very dramatic. <laughs> yeah, I had one full understand. glass. I'm like, I just feel. And then I'm like, I think I'm buzzed. And yeah. they're like, it's okay. But it's interesting once you start to really pull back on that, and tap into like how you feel in your essence, how you feel altered or connected mm -hmm. to your higher self. And then alcohol, it's it's just very interesting. Yeah, I I personally, I can relate to that so much. And I have sort of an interesting relationship with alcohol. Like I've never really liked it. And I've always felt that like if you ask any of my friends, like they would have to like force a shot on me back in the day. Like I was never like the one that was like, I'm not like a life of the party kind of girl, hence the projector thing. I'm more like in the corner having people come to me. And with alcohol, I, especially in the last few years, have just felt so bad after drinking. Like I think my – the way that I feel with like a very – what someone else would feel is like a very minor hangover to me is like 10x. Like mm -hmm. I think part of that is I'm really sensitive, like I said. But the other part is like I operate at a level where I feel really good most days. So when anything shakes that baseline, I'm very aware of it. And I'm also very aware that like I did this to myself. So that doesn't sit well with me. And I've kind of, I, I've dabbled with like, should I just be sober? Like, is that something that I feel called to? And I've gone through like a few month periods where I just haven't wanted to drink or I've been going through something health wise and I haven't been drinking. And that's always felt really good, obviously. Um, but then there are also times where I do want to participate. And so where I've kind of landed is drinking in scenarios where it feels intentional and where it feels good to me. So, you know, there are a few drinks that I enjoy. It's a spicy skinny margarita or like a really good glass of red wine with pasta. Those are things that I will say yes to if it feels good to me in that moment. I will never drink to get drunk and I will never drink to make myself more happy in a social situation. Going into something and being like, oh, I'm going to need a drink. That's not going to be me. It's going to be a check-in with myself and also like feeling totally good and empowered with ordering a mocktail or a soda water or whatever it is in that moment and just knowing like I'm taking care of myself. Yeah. I think that's what it boils down to for me. Yeah. I love that. I used to see drinking when I um, first – I actually would drink a lot, like a ton. And I was very much into partying and – after I started my practice is when I, I didn't feel like I needed it because I mm. really was medicating myself through alcohol for right. my anxiety. And at one time, I started to think, like, why am I going to do this today if it's just going to mess up tomorrow? Like, why would I do that? And I started yeah. to have that awareness. And then there are moments where it's like, oh, I'm on vacation, it's warm out, and I would love to have a glass of rosé and just enjoy mm -hmm. that. And it really is – about the intention. And I loved how you shared it on Instagram. That's what guided me to bring it up today, but how you shared again today that it's not to make yourself feel more comfortable. That is getting so real with yourself. Right. And really acknowledging how you feel in that moment and helping yourself come into that space of realization and then shifting it energetically. And I admire that so much. And I think it can be really hard for people. And there have been situations where like I push myself out of my comfort zone and more recently too where I'm like, if I drank, this would be so much easier. Right. But then you're like, but I have other tools now. Yeah, And exactly. I have other, you know, I have my self-regulation tools and I have my affirmations or whatever else you need to help get you through that. And it's not always about like looking at it from a sense of will it make me more comfortable, but also like I think a lot of times people drink to make others around them feel more comfortable. Yeah. There is a big push that you get when people realize that you're not drinking because mm. they want to feel like everyone's in it together. Yeah. And so also kind of getting rid of that idea that like I'm drinking to appease the people around me. They're not in this body the next morning dealing with the hangover. Like they don't, they're not along for that ride with me. So I need to just take care of me, show up and do whatever I need to do in that moment to feel good today and tomorrow. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's maybe the other party who is drinking thinking that 
we're judging that they totally. are or that we're going to like observe them in a more vulnerable state and it's really not like that no. at all if like, anything i want I'm you like, to go have I so love, much fun yeah i love that you're doing yeah. that and like I, I part of me envies to be totally honest a little bit that like they're able to just let loose like that and and feel fine the next day like yeah. There's a small piece of me that envies that. No, I understand that. Sometimes I'm like, if only I could have one more night like I used to have and not feel any repercussion of it. But it's like, ah, right. the awareness has shifted and yeah. it's just not in the cards right now. And there's a reason for it, <laughs> yeah. right? Like I, I need to be able to wake up and feel good in order to do what I need to do. Yeah. Can you step us through like a day in the life for a typical weekday? For you? Yeah. So I like to wake up around 7. I'll, I'll just do today, for example. Woke up at 7, um, took an 8 o'clock Pilates class at Good Day Pilates. Great spot in Soho. Have you been there? No. I feel like you'd love it. Um, and then I went home, got fully ready for the day, which is like a new thing I've been trying to lean into that's felt really good. Um, you know, putting a little makeup on, putting on an outfit that really makes me happy. And then I went and grabbed a matcha. I, I literally go to matcha pool every day. I know. Every time I see it on your page, every I'm so Every day. <laughs> Usually it's a donut and a matcha. Um, and I, I did a little bit of work there, got kind of like ahead of things on my email and whatnot. Um, and from there, like it will either be, you know, going to the recording studio to record a podcast or I, um, have a co-working space membership that I do. And so I go there for, you know, a good chunk of the day, take some calls there, things like that. Um, go home, cook dinner tonight. I have a lymphatic drainage at four, which I'm really excited about. Um, and I just really enjoy like quiet time at home at night, cooking a dinner that feels really nourishing and good, maybe enjoying a show, um, doing a meditation before bed. I've also started doing Wim Hof in the morning. Mm -hmm. Today I did not do it, but most days I try to to get the day started with a little breath work too. How long are you doing it for? Is it different every day or is there a certain amount of time? Um, I usually do four holds. So it's like breathing in and out 30 times. Mm -hmm. Hold for as long as you can. I've gotten up to like three minutes. Wow. And and then you do that like three or four times depending on how you're feeling. It's amazing. It's so revitalizing. It's amazing. I know. And I notice really the days is. that I haven't done it, how much more like reactive I can be. Mm -hmm. So I tend to sort of be a reactive person and it's kind of up to me to show up in a way each day and do the practices that allow me to not be reactive, whether it's, you know, the breath work or avoiding coffee or... Mm -hmm. We kind of like learn over the years, I think especially as we hit our 30s, like what does and doesn't do my system, my individual system that's not going to be the same as yours, what does good things for it? I've loved the 30s so much for that. Like this same. is my favorite decade so far. I same. hope it keeps getting better and I better. Know. That's I'm the like, hope. Hopefully this isn't the peak. <laughs> it's really great, but I hope it's Truly, not the Truly, 30s have been exceptional for that reason alone, just becoming so much more intuitive and like learning the system that you work with and like what works and what doesn't. But I feel like breathwork and the way in which the Wim Hof breathwork is, it really helps to burn off that excess energy. Yes. And any reactivity. And um, it's actually said that if you do 11 minutes of breathwork a day, you're going to have access to 60% more of your energy that you wouldn't typically have. I believe that. Isn't that wild? And I think it's been a big reason why my energy has been, because again, I track this on my symptom sheet. It's been like an eight or a nine out of 10 every day. And I'm like trying to think about what I'm doing. Listen, it's probably a lot of different things, mm -hmm. but breath work has been big for me. Yeah. It's the biggest relief for me and my biggest source of connection, the breath. I do like mantra too though. Do you ever practice mantra? A little bit. I've done it with you, which I yeah. love. I, I need to incorporate that in my practice more. I love the Aquarian sadhana mantras. You could find them on Spotify. Okay. Um, White Sun has a whole album of them. And are you just like listening to it while driving or walking or is it part of like you a meditation? You do both, but for the sadhana mantras, it's it suggests that you practice them in the morning and mm -hmm. you chant them in the morning. Um, it just what, – what breathwork helped me start to experience, mantra, I'm now able to experience that through mantra too. And in the Amazing. beginning, I was like – not like, what is singing a song going to do for me? And then right. you realize everything's a frequency. So it's really nice. It's like a beautiful topper. Yeah. And just brings in like this really blissful energy. How long did it take you? I know I'm like interviewing you now, but I'm no, just I curious. Love this is open conversation always. How long did it take you in your meditation practice? Like for it to switch from you kind of like pushing it to like do it every day to it being like, this is something I will never not do. 
I'll be honest. I was so much in fight or flight. I had no choice. Right. Like I needed something desperately. Mm -hmm. And I was at the point where I was going to see a doctor because of the panic attacks. And um, every doctor I saw, they would say like, you have so much anxiety. You need to do something about this. And I was at the point of like, okay, I'm ready to go see someone and explore this. Mm -hmm. And then breath work just like snuck in. And in that moment, it gave me the medicine I needed. So I was just like, every single day I'm going to do this because I felt immediate relief because right. I was I was in a bad place. But then on the journey, we're always changing. We're always evolving. Then there's days where it's like, do I really need this? Like, right. do I really need to do this? Right. I'm good. I don't have panic attacks anymore. I don't have anxiety mm -hmm. in the way that I once did. And I've had those days too in my journey where I'm like, I'm going to skip it today. And then all of a sudden, I'm feeling so reactive or right. frustrated. And I'm like, this isn't me. I don't really feel this way. And it's like, oh, what did I not do today? I think sometimes we get a little cocky because the practices totally. make you feel so good that you're like, oh, I don't need it. Yeah. And then you remember why. Yep. And I also think there's an evolution of like what you need and when you need it. True. Like kundalini could be really intense. And sometimes like I love to – work in some like really grounding and soothing breath works that are more simple and just mm -hmm. blissful because every day doesn't call for like beating yourself up in a meditation. True. Some days you just need to like be right. and breathe. So I think there's, you know, it's a journey for sure, but it's kind of like what you said where why wouldn't I do this if it just makes me feel my best? That's kind of where I'm in right now. Yeah, I totally yeah. get that. And I, I think going off of what you said, there is a balance between respecting the daily practices that you know make you show up amazingly and also getting rid of like the rigidity around it and yeah. it's a really tough balance to strike because but I think the answer to it is tweaking those practices to fit that day maybe you need a little bit less length in your meditation or maybe to your point you need something a little bit lighter than heavy breath work but still coming back to yourself and still taking care of yourself even when you feel really good yeah I agree and then there's sometimes where like you might feel lost or unmotivated and you're like, I don't know about you, but for me, every time it's like, you know what you have to do. And you don't want to you know what you have to do. You don't Just more do time it. with you. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Just more time for clarity, more time for silence, more time for going within. But that always comes up. It's almost like too much responsibility because I'm like, why can't I just be in a pity party right now and be like, things just aren't going well. And it's like, you're right. Because you are able to shift your frequency. <laughs> right. Sometimes having a toolkit is a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear all about your podcast. I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. I would love to talk about it. And it's so fun. I was saying to you beforehand, like being on the other side of the mic. Because I've been like interview, 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 and now I'm like, oh, I just get to sit back and like chat with you. Yes. Um, so the podcast is called Fem Pharmacy, and it really came about as a product of this chronic pelvic pain journey that I told you guys about. Um, and back to the manifestation of the things we need. I've always, always said to myself, there's no way this four-ish year journey has been for nothing. Like there will be something good that will come out of this. It will not be me suffering until I'm 100 years old. And I always believed that even on my worst days, there was still a flicker of that belief in me. Like there's, there's something's going to happen here and I'm going to be able to help people because I know so many people, I'm not the only one struggling with this. And I know that from experience of meeting friends that have had dealt with it and also from like the eons of hours I've spent in Facebook groups and Reddit threads. And like there's just a lot of people struggling. So I came across someone on social media. I put out a post on sweats one day about interstitial cystitis, which is essentially like a blanket term for chronic bladder pain. I was doing like medical medium celery juice at the time. And someone sent it to uh, my now co-founder, Sammy, just by chance, which like, again, universe at work, you never know how it's going to be delivered to you. But she came to me and she sent me a DM and she was like, I am going through the exact same thing as you mold, the lime, the infections, the yeast, the, you know, all of it. And we just connected right away. We had had such a similar experience and such a similar toolkit and sort of the way that we both had to adapt and become quasi doctors in the space in order to like really advocate for ourselves. And we said to each other very early on, like, we have to make a podcast. We have so many tools. People need these tools. It would be healing for us to share it. Um, and so it really started to come together this summer and we launched 
I think two weeks ago. So it's very fresh. So exciting. But yeah, we're bringing on, you know, all the people in our toolkit that have helped us, whether that's a doctor or a surgeon or an acupuncturist, a healer, everybody across the board. And Mm -hmm. I really like the alternative healing stuff. So we kind of balance each other in that way. And it's been really fun to have these conversations. I mean, it's like lighting me up in a way I didn't know was possible. That's so exciting. Yeah. It's so inspiring to see how many new avenues you take while sticking with like your foundation and the bread and butter of everything. It's fun because I do have the time and space for that. I'm very lucky that, you know, working with Sweats and Oro and the Herd, like there's a way to kind of make it all work. And, And also like the reason that it really came about was because I needed an outlet for this kind of stuff. I share a little bit about my health on sweats and that'll always be part of the messaging on there, but I can't at the end of the day have it dominate the conversation in a review and fitness focused account. Mm -hmm. So for that subset of people that are following my health journey, there is now a place where they can get that long form content if they wish to. I love that. I can't wait to tune in. Yeah. I'm so excited. Isn't it so different sharing on a podcast versus Instagram? It feels so much safer. It feels so safe, <laughs> I'm like, right? I know. I feel like I can say anything on here. I because know. If you're coming to my podcast to listen to a full hour episode, you know what you're getting. That's how I feel. I know. It's so cozy. It's so cozy. And yeah, it's just another way to express, right? And to, to put out there what we are here to kind of teach and lead as projectors, especially. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Can you share all the handles and all the information so people can follow up with you? Yes. So we have on Instagram at Sweats in the City, at the Herd app, and at Oro app. And from there, you can access any of those websites, apps, blogs, etc. And then Fem Pharmacy is the podcast. Um, it's at Fem Pharmacy on Instagram, and then as well as um, in the Apple Store and on Spotify. So great. I can't wait to tune in. Thank you. Thank you. Anything we could expect in the future? Anything else? <laughs> so for Femme Pharmacy, we're definitely working on something bigger coming, um, and it will make sort of these tools, especially products, more accessible. So excited. So stay tuned. <laughs> My gosh, it is incredible to watch your journey, and Thank it just you. continues to amplify and expands, and you're such an inspiration. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. And thanks for allowing me to come on here and share all of it. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoy the conversation as much as I did. I just love Elizabeth. I love her energy and I'm so grateful that she came on to share it with all of us today. If you're guided to check her out and follow the handles and all of the projects that she works on, please connect with her. She is incredible and she's offering such amazing things to the world. I, for one, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the Herd app because she has incredible recommendations there. And I feel like what an amazing resource we have, especially I'm in New York. So being New York-based, there are so many. But as you heard, any major city, um, she's really sharing a lot from each of them. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I hope it left you feeling inspired, revitalized, and energized like it did for me. And I can't wait to see you next time. As always, if you're inspired by the podcast, please feel free to share it with a friend, someone else that you think may need a message from what we shared today. And as always, we're so extra grateful when we get a rating or a review because that helps us to grow and reach more people. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Satnam. Satnam.